Leroy Jenkins. What's happening, dudes? This is Trent, and I'm going to take you back in time to 2006, before anybody even knew what the word lols meant. Uh, and cat memes were, the, were the, the trending thing on the internet. So before YouTube blew up, before there was artists doing time lapse, before there was uh, uh, smartphones in everybody's pocket. This is before Angry Birds, okay? I'm going way back in time since the times before your grandpa was in diapers. Okay, I had just started working at Blizzard Entertainment. I was a senior concept artist on Burning Crusade. And, uh, and around this time, uh, Upper Deck was developing a trading card game for Blizzard Entertainment based on World of Warcraft, the World of Warcraft TCG. The reason I'm talking about it is because I wanted to show you all of the artwork I've done for the Hearthstone set. And you're like, wait a minute, well, I thought we were talking about Hearthstone. Why are you talking about the TCG and all that? Well, because a lot of the cards that I made for the trading card game for Warcraft ended up going into the legendary, the infamous, and the, the one game that damn near broke the internet um, Hearthstone. This is one of the, the one of the best trading card games ever made. Digital trading card games ever made. And I was a substantial contributor. I mean, I, I've done over 50 cards or so. Now, that's like 13 years worth of work there. I mean, that's not the only thing I did, but I did a lot. I didn't have to. I wanted to. I guess you'd say it's like a novelty for me. Um, you know, I, I think I kind of look at it like how cool would it be if you know, Todd McFarlane still drew Spider-Man every now and then. I mean, it's kind of the thing that he cut his teeth on, and I, I had found his work through that. And, and, I, and I guess I kind of think of Hearthstone as sort of like that for me. Um, not, I'm not comparing or anything like that. I'm just saying that's like I, I did World of Warcraft for many, many years as a concept artist. And so now I get to keep going back and <laughs> keep going back to the well and uh, keep doing paintings of characters and environments that I designed for World of Warcraft, but in this sort of modernized new take. And, and you can see a lot of my personal development as an artist really comes out uh, when you look at a lot of the artwork that I was doing back in 2006. And you can look at the dates on a lot of these and see you know, when they were made. This is really before I knew half of anything that I, I know how to do with Photoshop now. And a lot of this was where I was doing these um, these concept designs, these paintings for Warcraft. And I'd only have like two or three hours a lot of times on those paintings. And so that's what I, that was the cadence that I was used to. That's the pressure that I was under from my art director on Warcraft. So uh, I tried to carry over that same kind of level of schedule. You can imagine, you know, the pressure of feeling that like, oh, my God, it's, you know, there were countless nights of being up, I would say, at 2 a.m., you know, still still working, trying to, to do the trading cards that I was trying to keep up with and all the concept art that I was trying to do because I was, I was actually a full-time employee at the time. And Blizzard was cool enough to allow that. You know, there was some uh, kind of debates about that, but I was involved early enough that it wasn't an issue at all. I was one of the only... I think, well, I was the only dedicated concept artist on War, on World of Warcraft at that time. Um, and I mean, a lot of people did concept art for it, but I was the only guy that was my only job there. So I didn't have time to like sit down and spend more than six or seven hours on one painting. No way, man. I had like, I had to get back to designing on Goro Crater, man. Ain't got time to work on some trading cars. Mm -mm. It was hard to find uh, stylized concept artists back in 2006, but we started to hire them a lot more rapidly after that. Uh, but uh, whatever the case, I don't want to get off track. We're talking about <laughs> uh, the Warcraft TCG here. And we their the one requirement for us was that it did not disrupt our work on games because Blizzard's always held this policy of like, um, we make games. We we do not get involved in making the lunch boxes or the comics. Those are always licensed by somebody. In this case, the Warcraft trading card game was licensed by Upper Deck. So how does it work? Uh, I put these images together. I think uh, I'm glad I saved them. They give you this description and you do like three little thumbnail sketches, basically. And we cooked up these three little thumbnail sketches. You spend about maybe an hour or less doing the three thumbnails. Then they send you an approval and they picked one and then we do these color comps and you spend maybe like half an hour to 45 minutes just doing these three different color variations. They pick one of those and then you start rendering and then you send them an update about halfway through your render 
uh, in this case, you can kind of see, I, I'm gonna cycle through a few of the different stages here. You can see the different stages of what I had sent them. The first one was just way too dark, high contrast in the background. Remember that Hearthstone cards have to have a really strong no-tan read, the, the value contrast of the, the focal point and, and uh, what's at the center of the frame uh, needs to be pretty dramatic because these get shrunk down to almost icon size. They need to have a good readability even when you're zoomed way out. I think that's true of book covers. It's true of comic book covers. It's true of almost all illustration. It really helped me out to do a lot of user interface and icons over the years because they're basically just little paintings, little compositions. And when you look at these, you can tell that uh, I'm using a lot of tricks like color contrast, value contrast, line edge contrast, which I just recently did a video on about uh, controlling your, your, your edge contrast to get sharper, clearer, more focused elements in your paintings versus blurring out background elements and silhouetting them and making them less uh, prominent. This particular piece turned out very successful and I attribute a lot of that to uh, working with my team um, here at Aquatic Moon. I do run an art house and uh, if, if you don't know that already, we do a lot of illustrations and concept art for Overwatch and many other projects. And, and uh, one of the things we do is some Hearthstone cards. And, and uh, you know, if you, if you wanna really push yourself and develop your skills, uh, take a painting to about 50% and then go to one of your art buddies and say, hey man, why don't you finish this up and I'll, and I'll finish up one of your pieces. And then once, once you get it back, do another pass on it. And what you'll find is like, you get to see how they solve problems in your shoes from your perspective of the things that you're trying to solve. You'll get to see how they solve it. And that trade-off really, really helps you to see a different possible solution to challenges or problems in your paintings that another how another person might solve that and sometimes you're working with another artist and they they do something that you don't like and you realize well I, I would never do it that way and so then you paint over it and you have a reaffirmed sort of reasoning as to why you've chosen to do things the way that you do them you know I would say that I grew the most when I started working with other artists and assimilating information and techniques that they use I suppose that's the benefit of working with a team. And it's kind of always been that way, even in working in game development, you know, we trade off, we pass our, our designs off to somebody else to see like, hey, how would you solve this lighting issue? Or, you know, what would you do for this kind of a door or this thematic element? Uh, this one I worked with Danny Kong on again. And what I love about this piece is just how you get that dramatic contrast of warm foreground, main characters warm in the foreground, and then you get this cool gray desaturated background. I'm very pleased that I was able to save a lot of my iterations. Uh, this one I worked with Danny Kong on again, uh, and I think he did a lot of the initial sketch for it, and then I took it to final in the final process. But uh, again, you know, with that uh, really warm foreground element, and then very cool colors going on in the background, and then you got a little bit of that atmospheric diffusion, like flattening things out in the background. Um, so yeah, you can see a lot of the, the stages of the process there for that one. Turned out really good. I like that one. But I can barely say that that was me. That was, you know, my team, Aquatic Moon, all working together in simpatico synchronization. And as we get into the more recent stuff, you'll see that I, this was a, still a few years ago, but I had kept some of the early sketches. I'm surprised they didn't go with the first one on this one. Instead, they went with this... Uh, the the middle one here and uh one of the points of feedback was hey man it needs to be more bright and saturated just to match the set you know you know personally i tend to like the more darker kind of vibes but you know you don't really get to choose it's like you really have to match the style that they're going for and if they give you a style guide well you got to follow that they didn't have one before but now they do the volcanic lumberer <laughs> i did not get a, a, a name we don't always get the name a lot of times they give us a description of something that they want and then they decide on a name and a purpose for it later so i never really know what they'll be called or if they'll even make it into the set geez what's a little more insight uh hearthstone i like how did it get started and like what was that like i, I wasn't personally involved in it but i watched it from a distance they had hired this guy named ray gresco uh, who was i think i believe one of the founders of nihilistic Anyway, they just wanted to work with this guy and he didn't know what he was like. He didn't know what to do. They just said, get in here. We'll figure something out for you. So he just started making a sort of a digital card game version of the, the TCG all in Flash. He was programming this stuff all in Flash. 
Now, back then, Blizzard was small enough of a, of a company that you could fit everybody into a movie theater. So every month or two, they'd do these movie theater trips. We'd f- go and watch a movie, or before we'd watch the movie, we'd... Uh, we kind of review everything that was going on at the company. Like here are the new projects and here's some new concept art. And here's the new expansion for wow. And here's this new digital version of the trading card game. And bam, after that, it took like maybe two or three years later and they had Hearthstone just like that. But bam, Ray is now, I think the, the production director on Overwatch. He's a, he's a baller by the way. And he's the guy who pulled a lot of the Diablo three team together. Thank that guy for even that game even existing. Now, sometimes unusual and unexpected things happen when you're doing art for something like Hearthstone. And a few years back, I was sponsored by Autodesk to uh, to create illustrations for, or using, entirely using Sketchbook Pro. Um, and they wanted, well, they saw that I had drawn a lot of Hearthstone cards and they were like, hey, we, we're doing this uh, competition, a tournament, and we'd really like you to draw the banners for it using entirely Sketchbook Pro to show people what the software could do. And I was like, hell yeah. So I jumped on that. Uh, this is the resulting piece that turned out from it. Blizzard doesn't own this. It, this was paid for by Autodesk. And I love those guys. I miss those guys. Uh, if you're thinking of getting into digital art, Sketchbook Pro is free now. So go check that out. And then watch my YouTube videos on how to use that tool. And dudes, I can't believe I just summarized like 13 years worth of artwork. <laughs> Not like that's the only thing I did, but all into less, less than 13 minutes of a video. That's unbelievable. Uh, come back in another 10 to 13 years and I'll have another stack of, of illustrations for Hearthstone. I'm sure that'll still be going on. It's been such a pleasure to be a part of that and to see it grow and develop. It's been a pleasure to be a part of Blizzard's history. You know, I think in a lot of ways, that's why I still do them. But I have since moved on. I probably would have been a Blizzard guy for life, but you don't get to choose these sorts of things. And and that's probably a good thing because now I'm doing my own thing. I do a lot of the same kind of stuff that I did for Blizzard for myself now. Speaking of which... Well, if you're watching this and you really like the artwork and you'd like to see more of it, I write my own fiction. I write a bunch of novels and short stories in the universe of Twilight Monk. And I just put out an art book, actually, full color, 88 pages of illustrations and concept art and backstory for the characters in the world of Twilight Monk. You can pick that up over in the link in the field below this video, or you can get the digital version for super cheap over on my Gumroad channel. And don't forget to subscribe and dudes, until next time, I'll catch y'all. Mind you on the bond and ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.